Hello everyone and welcome back to the live coverage of YCS Milan 2019. We're down to the top 16, there's very few competitors left, and I'd like to introduce our players for this round. First, I want to bring in Andreas Vrelos. Come on in. How are you doing today, man? I'm probably fine. Probably fine? Are you feeling confident about this next match? Uh, yeah, I was playing against this guy in the Swiss also, and I beat him 2-0, and I'm feeling good right now. <laughs> That's about as confident as you could get. So you were actually a winner of YCS Rimini in the Zodiac format, right? Yeah, exactly. I won the Zodiac format. So today, if you could be playing the current deck you're playing or your Zodiac deck, which deck would you be playing? Probably Zodiac. <laughs> Do you think it'd still be good in this format? Uh, yeah, it was the best deck. <laughs> All right, man, if you'd like to take your seat, I'm going to call in your opponent. Coming in from Luxembourg, we have Inas Gutisch. Come on in. Hi. How are you doing today, man? Uh, very good, thank you. So we just heard that you've already actually played against Andreas. Uh, he actually destroyed me 2-0 in like 10 minutes. So I didn't play that much, but it was okay. That seems a little bit dicey. Do you think you're going to have a, a chance to get back at him at this point? Uh, yes, of course. Like Revenge tastes better than a, a simple win, I think. I absolutely 100% agree with that. So we were talking a bit before the start of the match, and you said you started about two years ago, right? Yes. And um, I started my Yu-Gi-Oh career with Andreas Vrelo's deck from Mimini. So that's when I started. So I'm kind of a small fan of him. Well, you get a chance to beat your hero, hopefully. Faster than 10 minutes, though. Then you get him back properly, right? Yeah, and become a self-hero then. <laughs> exactly. Be, be the hero in your own story. Yeah, hopefully. All right, man, if you'd like to take a seat, and we're going to get started in just a second. Guys, I hope you're ready. I'm going to throw you over to our casters for this round, Farfa and Tom. Welcome back to top 16. That was a lot of mudslinging. That, that was, was trash talk. <laughs> I honestly, I hope that we get more of this in the future rounds. Yeah. I just want Matt to like egg them on. Is this so like, interesting that what he do you said, think? How badly are you going to beat this guy? Like, yeah. <laughs> is it interesting that he like basically said the guy net decked him and then like now I know he did beat me too. They both old. seem to be on the same page about this. I feel like we needed uh, more from Gutich to be like, yeah. no, I'm going to beat him. Not like, oh yeah, he just wrecked me too. <laughs> like I copied his list, like whatever. No, he's like, no, I'm going to. Well, I'm I hope to see a good showing here because this is uh, probably one of my favorite decks of all time. Salaman Great. Salaman Great. Your favorite deck? One of them. That not. Not my favorite of all time. I think it's pretty obvious what my favorite deck of all time is. The, the guy with the machine dip target. Really? I thought it was BA. <laughs> Did we talk about this yesterday? Trip dip scoop? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Salomon Great here. And, um, you know, decks of all time. We had this discussion, and Andreas just asked it. Like, what would you rather play? I said Zoo. When we were to, I was talking about it with some of my friends, I said Zoo. Yeah. Someone else was like, no, 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 Goki, Goki, Goki. I was like, come on, Zoo. What was your opinion? Best deck ever? If you just put all of the deck, like unbanned every themed card, mm. what would it be? Dual Alliance, Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss? Okay, <laughs> well, we can play. <laughs> you can see how well your beard just lines we're not, up we're not putting against there. a whip tail. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> we're not betting on that. <laughs> so we've got, um, the first thing I wanted that jumped out at me here, it feels, feels like a pretty standardized like Salmon Great list. I feel like this deck over the po the, the past like few months and things has just kind of like naturalized into like a bunch of hand traps. Yeah, um, no word of a lie. Cards. I was playing on um, Friday. I was taking a chance to play some side events. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I didn't have a deck. So I just asked my friend like, can I borrow a deck? And he just gave me almost card for card this deck. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's played, very hard to see differences. Close to the, the, uh, only, the list as we get. The only card choice I feel that I see is like really different is uh, Will of the Salomon Great. I feel like that that has like yeah, flip flopped. Yeah, I agree. Players have uh, differing around. opinions on like yeah. zero up to three. Even. Yeah. So recently at YCS Pasadena, uh, Walter Jewel, I believe, was one of the highest Salomon Great finishes, and he played like three copies. And conver conversely, you have someone like Paulo Goncalves, who's like topped quite a few events with Salomon Great, oh, and yeah. he he doesn't play any zero? copies, like yeah. zero. So it's interesting to see that you have people who like are choosing to go with three of these and others who are like with zero. But we'll see how it unfolds. It's Salomon Great versus, is it Orca Skystriker? It is Orca Skystriker indeed. So let's uh, head on over to the, the gameplay and see how this unfolds. So to me, a, a huge thing, he knows what he, uh, he knows, knows what he's playing against. So if he, if he gets the opportunity to start and has a, has a, a decent hand, then he can end with an Abyss Dweller. And this was one, yeah. of the, one of the things that people had. Like, this was the thing that like Salaman Great did, I felt, was like, you, if you end Dweller plus, um, why does it say? Uh, I thought it said Circle, I was just reading it wrong. But yeah, if you end like Dweller plus Raw, I mean, that's 
almost unstoppable, right? Because you yep. activate Dweller, and then the Dweller is guaranteed to resolve unless your opponent happens to have like impermanence plus red reboot, which seems like quite an unlikely combo game one. So one thing we saw, like I don't want to, uh, probably I don't know if it was this format. Maybe it was the last one, but people were like really going hard on this like Dweller Turbo variant of it, where you'd like play like multiple copies of like Foul. Yeah, just... Foul's really dropped out actually. Yeah, I think it's just because like it's lost the kind of consistency necessary to like really go hard on the Dweller, and it's like. Dweller is like obviously like really really great card like it's it's super super powerful. However, like uh, when your opponent's like playing like the Sky Striker Orcus variant, like sometimes you can you can like if you draw enough like the of the of the Striker uh, portion of your deck, you can kind of like survive a little bit longer for like to deal with the Dweller yeah. and then like have that follow up with the Orcus that later. Is, that is kind of what the Striker is there for as well. I mean, mm. as well as being this like extra turb, it's also like a fallback. You can like if you can't do your Orcus things, you get Lancia. You can still possibly use the striker card. So if you're under like a floodgate, you can still take your opponent's monster with Widow Anchor, etc, etc. I mean, uh, looking at Andreas's hand, it looks like this Dweller is going to be pretty, pretty devastating, if I'm totally honest. Yeah, like, armor, the Dweller mass. backed up with, I mean, one of the things that Salamangrate do is um, like everything that they use. So he used a Spinny and uh, Ooh, a Gazelle. He's linking off the Falco here. Uh, he can he can still go for Dweller, actually, with the, uh, with the Falco, right? He's got Will, so yes. Yeah, yeah OK, that's fine. All right. Uh, I'm sure that he... Oh, yeah, they played each other like this event. Until, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they, they know exactly how it's how, uh, what the other person is playing. They might even have a slight idea about their um, their side patterns and stuff just because of the, the experience. Although it was only like maybe like five minutes of game time. <laughs> it's still something. So Will of the Salomon Great is uh, able to special summon a monster once per turn, or it has that secondary effect, very reminiscent of Soul Charge. I don't you... think it is. People always compare. No, no, no. Charge. Trust me. Trust it me. Let me tell. I love this card. Okay, it's literally Soul Charge. Literally Soul Charge of the Salomon Great. I mean, it's great. even better because you get your battle phase right. I mean, uh, it's yeah, so, yeah, yeah, insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you have to summon Salamangrate great monsters that aren't link monsters in defense mode. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Salamangrate great wolf like pointing sideways. <laughs> That would be, I would like Link Monsters to do yeah. that. That would be really cool. So I think this is the opportunity where you would probably activate the Dweller, right? Once a card that's been committed to the field. No you longer just want... impermanence. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, and there's the impermanence picked up off the top there. I mean, um, it doesn't matter because, again, Enos can just wait until something is put into the graveyard mm -hmm. and then activate Dweller because he's going to have to... You can't, like, activate impermanence because you chain the Dweller. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to have to summon like, like his Armageddon Knight or activate his Orchestrated Return or whatever. There's, there'll, there'll be another window. Yeah. But I agree. I don't really see why you hold the Dweller, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. In fact, I think you activate it just in case. In case your opponent draws... For, like, I don't know if Forbidden Chalice is that popular, but I saw some lists running it in YCS oh, Pasadena. Yeah, really? Yeah, Chalice. So okay. is he draw what's he drawn to... Oh, he drew the... You see, there you go. So he drew that Widow Anchor from uh, Allure of Darkness. Ooh. So if he just played it a little bit earlier, then mm. he wouldn't have been able to draw the Widow Anchor, as, as you suggested. So that is that extra safety net. Mm. Honestly, I think like Ina's hand is strong enough. To, ooh, that's no Ash either. I mean, you can hold the Ash for, uh, for, for the, the You horror. just hold it for that's the heart, fine. right? Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. So I think that Ash Blossom is really what's going to be able to help him like stop this turn, because it was almost a little bit... Like, I mean, as well, this Ash is devastating, because it's... You just... It's like, it does it. So, I mean, like, I was going to say the Dwellers in his five. It's not because Andreas has Gizmek. Mm -hmm. But now he has to summon the Gizmek, I think. Yeah, and he's Because otherwise the Dwellers is there next turn. And so he's, he's thrown two negates at it. And now he's not even got any monsters in the grave to activate. Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's good job. <laughs> um, a really, like, you know, high variance, like, card here with Gizmek banishing eight cards off the top of yeah. your deck. Like, there's a lot of, like, this engine can you vital. can remove. Unfortunately, we don't yet have the technology to see, like, face down the cards. face down yeah. banished cards. They're face down for a reason, you know, with you. Yeah. We're, all, we're always looking for uh, suggestions. So if anyone has holographic uh, see-throughs, yeah. <laughs> let, let us know. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what he uh, actually banished there. But he goes for the uh, link to, uh, I always forget blocker. his name, Barricade, Barricade Blocker. Yeah, blogger. So, I mean, he's not he's, a blogger, is he? I think he's barricade blocker, barricade board blocker. Yeah, barricade board blocker. That's his name. Uh, discarding the nightmare, so he's got access to the engine now, and that dweller has been negated, so he's not really just going. about. But I mean, this is like he's no, going fantastic. to be able to combo. But I mean, look how much stuff Enos has on his board. Yeah, like that's a lot of stuff. He's also picked up circle and rage off the top there. Um, and like the ash blossom is in the graveyard, so it means he's going to be able to yeah. recur on his turn. Andres only card left is the um, well the only non yeah card like the only card left in his hand is the Phantasme, which a lot of people have gone back and forth about. And well, I can Phantasme? understand like because it's a card that 
it's better than any card that's not a hand trap on your opponent's turn, but it's pretty much worse than any card that is a hand trap. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you would almost always rather, like, a direct negation mm -hmm. most, uh, against uh, most decks. But so the, the the thing is with uh, Phantasmi and a deck like um, Salmon Great is like naturally like the the engine of Salmon Great I'd say is not that large so you have like a lot of room for like a bunch of hand traps so we see here he's running like a, a huge lineup so Phantasmi is able to like ideally draw you into like one of these like clutch hand traps when your opponent commits that first link summon so he's playing like Triple Ash Double DD Crow Skullmeister yeah exactly but with that reasoning if your aim is a hand trap. You might as well just play the you hand trap well <laughs> in the right? first place. So yeah, it's, but it's, it's 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 just a really it, it feels like almost standard. It's so much fun when you play it. Yeah, I know I know what you mean. Yeah, in Salmon Gray, I I haven't seen a list honestly without yeah, fantastic. You can other than budget ones, put it under the um, put it under the Sunlight Wolf. Yeah, to trigger the recursion. Mm -hmm. All lovely stuff. By the way, I just wanted to mention, <laughs> I totally glossed over it. You know, so I actually managed to open the Gazelle. So that's one issue that this deck has is like consistency sometimes. But, you know, if you open Spinny Gazelle every game, like you're going to be pretty, pretty happy with that. That's so. a good hand. Yeah. So Why do you think he's not playing more copies? What, of uh, Gazelle? Gazelle? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's probably a reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it seems like one of the best cards, isn't it? Kind of bricks at two, I mean, you I can always search it's it per turn. with Stalio. <laughs> so, out or circle. Mm hmm. Or sign it mining. I feel like this is redundant. You might like draw one and sign it mining. So. <laughs> uh, Dengirsu is uh, going to send something. Send or attach? Probably send. I feel like your opponent has enough cards that you you feel like you ought to send something. I don't it, know what you ought to send, but it, it's a really resilient field here. Has he, has he? He hasn't used his battle phase quite yet, has he? No, that was just the send. So he's got bailings in the graveyard, which means like it's it's really hard to like. I don't want to say out a Salmon Great board because it's like not that hard to out Salmon Great board, but it's like it's just really sticky, you know. Like I feel like that kind of like that word really best describes like the format, you know, like Sky Striker cards like lingering around or custom like loading up their graveyard. I like the way I, I said that before. Now you're copying me. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, now I'm using it's, it to it's describe. A, it's a I'm, sticky word. <laughs> now I'm using it to describe uh, Salmon Great. So. Exactly, yeah. sticky Salmon Greats. I, I, do, do you think he's playing Pyro Phoenix? Let me see. I really, no. So if we have a look now, so. Andreas is passed. Mm -hmm. He's just got the Babel for defense. So if we hover over his graveyard at some point. It likes your finger better than mine. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no interruptions coming from his graveyard. So I feel like Enos is probably fairly happy with this situation. Yep. You so just Andreas that. is going to get the Phantasme, which will get him one of the top few cards. It's like a, it's like a pot of duality. Um, but he's going to get to bounce this Dingirsu, right? Mm. With the effect of Stalio. Really, like the biggest advantage of uh, the like Dingirsu is like the destruction protection doesn't activate; it's continuous. The Salmon Great able to circumvent that really easily with the, with a card like Salmon Great uh, Stalio. Yeah, Target a card on the field, great. bounce it. Really good against like Thunder. The Foxy's going to threaten the Babel as well. Yep. Uh, it's it's all looking. Rosie for Enos. Uh, I don't know if he runs the second dweller. I think that's probably fallen out of popularity. Yeah. People players in like previous formats yeah. were definitely maining two copies of uh, not maining, but had two copies of a Abyss Dweller in their extra deck for that. situations like this. You just say, okay, now you've cleared my dweller, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make another one. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remember a young uh, Tim Cox running a double dweller, because uh, that's just what the deck does. You just turbo it that uh, turbo that card out as best as you can and just deals with like so much of the format. Yeah. Best dweller. I like the siding scythe going second as well. It's like, how do we? How going do we, second? Yeah, yeah. How do we beat your opponent's sanctum when they sanctum? You just sanctum them back. That was a good. <laughs> <laughs> that was something that people were talking about last format. Yeah. But uh, this format, what do we think? Andreas picked up. He picked up an allure. That was the best of the top three. Wow, those top three must have been <laughs> pretty dire. <laughs> the best one is like a card which may just discard itself. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's pretty weak. I think he's uh, resolving Will right now, I believe. Oh, he's using the effect of Jaguar to return the Stalio to bring it underneath the zone of uh, Sunlight Wolf. Jaguar is a card that, like, 
it's really it, it just does so much but like i really lo like i just love this deck like i could talk about this all day but like you i just like feel like recycling it, it, yeah it it's, it's like such a it's such a well balanced deck, deck that does a lot and a, yeah it feels very very fair yeah all of the cards like they don't do that much but they but it just feels like it's all such a together. good toolbox yeah you know? they, do, they it have just meshes together like so well is that a harp that was uh, activated there i wonder what's prompting the chain of the harp maybe i'll find out but I don't really know like why, why he's doing it now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, there might be a reason, but I don't know what that reason is. So, Enos did not use the effect of Mirage Stalio, right? Oh, that was why, because he was going to add the Ash to his hand. So he decided now would be a good time to activate Heart Horror so it can't be Ash. Uh, doesn't something like will say you can't use it that turn anyway? Oh, uh, no, you just can't summon it. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, as I as I mentioned earlier, so Enos didn't use the Stalio effect, and the Stalio effect is the one which prevents you from activating the effects of non-fire monsters. Mm -hmm. So maybe he has some plan involving a non-fire monster um, that might, you know, push for game this turn or something like that. I'm kind of interested to see like if you're not activating that, that probably means you have a plan to activate the effect of a non-fire monster, and he's not done that yet, and he's not done any other effect which locks him into fire monsters. So. I'll be interested to see how that pans out. I'm curious. Uh, let me just check his graveyard here. Uh, I could have sworn I saw him pick up a rage earlier at some point off the Phantasmia. Maybe, maybe, yeah, he, maybe he just, just put it. it yeah, rage, he might have yeah. just put it back rather than keeping it. Um, but he's got impermanence and ash. If he, I don't know. I mean, do you really think he can OTK this turn? Salamander is one of those decks, I think you have to have played it a little bit before you can figure out how to, okay, like, I've got these summons, these summons, these summons. People were in the past obviously playing um, Fusion of Fire, mm. which was just kind of a win button. You knew what you had to do in order to OTK with Fusion of Fire, right? It Why do you think that card just fell out of popularity? I haven't seen it in a list in a while. I don't, maybe the deck, people just don't feel it's consistent enough to support this, like, okay, I can search it, but I can, how do you search it? You search it with Gazelle, mm. and most people are like, well, I really need, I, like, you can't play without Gazelle, and it's another card which just does nothing. He's going for it. So this is the uh, update jammer transcode. Oh, do you think uh, this is the, uh, the, the Borrel load? Double attack. Borrel sword? Oh, the oh, double attack with the Borrel. Oh, yeah, because update jammer gives them also two attacks, so he's yeah. able to just, like, yoink the field, basically. <laughs> Yoink it. Exactly. He's going to yoink his entire field. <laughs> um, if he we sends. have a look at his extra deck, I, I'm guessing that's a moral load that's coming out. Uh, I don't see what else is you're going to use Update Jammer on. He sends Will to use the the Soul Charge effect to uh, bring out Falco and Foxy. The Soul Charge effect. In inverted uh, commas. I think yep. we'll have to put that. <laughs> he uses uh, the Update Jammer as a material. Is this, and that's yeah, this four. looks like an OTK to me because he'll be able to take two monsters with moral load. Mm -hmm. Um, well, he doesn't have to take two monsters, actually. So he can take Phantasme with Borrel Load and then clear the skeleton just by attacking over it with the Jaguar, which does piercing damage anyway. Yep, just like some and bonus piercing have, damage like, they gave him. The Borrel Load extra attack. Um, and yeah, this looks like more than enough to end the game this turn. I'm really impressed with Except Innes's... for Gizmic. Oh, uh, yeah. The, is it, do, does he have one in his group? Yeah, he's got a Gizmic. Yeah, he, he used it last turn. So I suppose, in a sense, he's baiting out the, the Gizmic. Mm-hmm which uh, will be resolving but a total of two times, like whittling down yeah. his resources and deck that probably quite significantly. May have been a small oversight on Enos Park, because maybe... I don't think this is game through Kismic. Do you think it's still go worth going through this line? Because, like, I mean, like, you just totally wiped their board. I mean, what else would you maybe do? I might have preferred if this was your plan. I don't know if it was still threatened lethal to steal your opponent's... Um, Symbol skeleton, and then it's on your field rather than in the graveyard. Mm. So then they don't have access yeah, to so it. Yeah, so you just keep it. Right. Um, honestly, I feel like it's not going to matter. Like, there's such a difference in card advantage here. Yeah. Uh, there's the. I mean, Borrel Load is, you know, it's not that hard to out. It's not like by itself it, you can't out it, but. Um, coupled with all the other Coupled things. with all the other yeah. stuff that you also need to kill, it's, it's still a big threat. Yeah. Uh, I there's don't think. I don't know what the optimal time to play Gizmek was, but it doesn't matter because you can reduce the attack and attack over it with Phantasme. Mm -hmm. So I think the correct time was to wait for the uh, wait for the um, wait for the Sunlight Wolf to attack because then the reduce wouldn't bring it under the Sunlight Wolf. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that game anyway. Here. All right. So 
Well, Ines taking that out. Really impressed with this play there. He planned that whole turn out, you know, holding... Yeah, holding I think hold maybe it was just game through. I don't think Andres could have stopped the game-winning attack. I don't, I don't mm. actually, I didn't calculate the life points, but maybe that was just game through. He planned that out with the uh, by holding the Stalio effect yeah, in the graveyard. Yeah, as we mentioned. Yeah. He had that so. plan the whole time. Really nice play. Definitely it went a lot better than their round in Swiss, it seems. Exactly. so. Exactly. That was a swift win for Ines. Yeah. You know what's really fun is when you do the update jammer and you do it with Bomber Dragon? Because oh, yeah? then you get the, 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 the damage burn. effect yeah. twice, and you're like, boom, 6k. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that's really so much fun. I think, my, honestly, my favorite interaction was with the Thunder Dragon deck, and you just steal, like, two Colossus. Like, <laughs> it's so satisfying, so Your satisfying. Colossus, no, my Colossus. Let's take a look at the side deck here. He's playing three copies of Nibiru, a card that kind of fell out of favor, but specifically versus this deck, I've been that's when it's, in, like, top oh, tier, right? Are you talking about... Um, Andreas playing Nibiru against oh, Salamangre. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong deck list. I mean, he is also playing yeah, Nibiru. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so only do you mean copies. Nibiru is good against Salamangre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I agree. It is good against Salamangre. Um, and maybe he will. So that was a way we, we were talking about Will and as to whether it was you know, popular. One of the things people often cite when they talk about Will is that it actually allows you to play through... Disruption. Um, well, it allows you to play through specifically the Nibiru because mm -hmm. a lot of the Salamangre monsters let you summon one, but the, all of them... Almost all of them have a condition of having a Salamangre already on the field, mm. um, except for Gazelle. But you know, you, you often use your Gazelle up anyway. So the will is one thing that lets you just put a monster on the field to then start your string of Salamangre summons. So that was why the will was popular. So the one thing that I would say about that, and it's like one of the reasons why some people choose to just simply not play the card, is that once you've uh, reached a certain amount of summons, five being the threshold. Generally, by that point, you've activated most of the important Salmon Great card effects. So by the time you're Nibiru, you activate the will and you bring out the, you know, the, the extender of sorts. What do you really do at that point? Because all you have up at, that, uh, at that point is like a Salmon Great monster and a token. And by five summons, you've generally activated most of the important effects. Yeah, so like you, I think maybe the really aim from there? is to get maybe a wolf back so you can use your raw. I mean, something like that. Mm. Okay. I know what you mean. Like, I, I don't really feel like the Salamangre Great Monsters are worth investing like too much to summon more of them. Like, if they get stopped, you know, just whatever. But I mean, just, that's just my opinion of Salamangre Great Monsters. But yeah. these monsters are just not worth. They're just summoning. not worth it. <laughs> All right, we're uh, starting off game two here, and uh, Andreas is choosing to go first. Opens the the one of copy of drones. Grr, you open the one of. How could you have done this? Mm, I know it's not like he runs three engage. <laughs> So unfortunately, so the infinite impermanence is often the one that does the trick by itself. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, it won't because it, he's got rather than the there's no effect to negate here, right? That you need to negate that's on the field. So no, he's he's not typically. I would say drawing the heart horror is weaker because it does require the normal summon. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you send arm again, if you summon arm again, like to send heart horror, it's just like you've got a bonus monster and that can combo off by itself. But here, it's much better to have the Heart Horror because he's otherwise would have been blown out by the Impermanence if he tried to normal summon Mathematician, yeah, right? Yeah, yep. Two called by the Graven Hand and, you know, being a trap card, he wouldn't be able to use it. Well, Infinite Impermanence is being used on the uh, uh, Galatea here. I feel like that's probably the best time you could uh, you could use it on. Or I was thinking maybe, like, he could hold it for his turn and then just, like, stand by Shogana on the Mascarena that he would end on. Yeah, that's a strange one. Because obviously, I mean, my instant response was, of course, he can just summon another Galatea. He doesn't have to try and use the effect of this one. Mm -hmm. So it may have been a waste. But on the flip side, yeah, he wouldn't be able to use the impermanence this turn anyway. So it, I can see why you would do it. I feel like that's too easy of a challenge for your opponent to play around it in this instance. So mm -hmm. I think, like, he can eat very, I think, very easily be making another Galatea. Ash Blossom dropped as well. Call by the Grave used in Chain. He's got two of them, so he's the, that Pankratops that I'm looking at in Ines' hand for the next turn. It's probably going to be a little bit susceptible to that second Call by the Grave. And uh, Pankratops yeah. against the Sky Striker Orcus deck. Do you think it's strong? Do you think it's good enough? I don't think so. I think people like think, this is a good card going second. I'll put it in. Mm. Um, I mean, it's OK. It's it's not, but it's just not like super because again, they're big, mostly because of Dingirsu, right? Mm. You just think when that card exists. I mean, again, the board's not. Some people we spoke to were like specifically targeting the end of, the end board of like IP plus some other stuff. Yeah. And Pankratops does a great job threatening uh, IP Mascarena. Um, but it feels a little like it, it. It doesn't seem too outlandish for your opponent to have some sort of hand where they end on a Dingirsu. I mean, maybe not, but. 
it feels like it, you know it just gets so poorly shut down by a Dengizu. Yeah. Um, it matches up so badly towards it, which is strange to read it. Like, read Pank Drops and think, what could possibly shut this down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Call by the is. Grave is uh, a super uh, powerful card that uh, we're probably going to see here. I mean, to be, to be fair, that's kind of fine because it's a one-for-one -one trade. Like, it's just, you just played an MST, right? Yeah. But against Dingirsu, that's specifically just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you've traded rather than an MST. You've, like, played a whatever it is, a card which removes a material from your opponent's card. <laughs> Which is not so strong. <laughs> remove, <laughs> remove there is, there is a quick play spell that does that. Probably, right? yeah. yeah. And it probably gains some attack and uh, no, I think it just removes summons it. Utopia and yeah. then makes Utopia double and then Yuma shouts high five the sky or something. No, I don't think there's anything that does quite that many yeah. that much stuff in a single spell. <laughs> in a monster, maybe, <laughs> but not in a spell. All right. Uh, so in his graveyard, he's uh, pretty much locked and loaded. Babbles on the field. This is kind of like the standard end board that you're looking for with yeah. the uh, Sky Strike Orc. Oh, this is super strong because the Shizuku as well to such the engage for next turn is just crazy. It's like get through all of this and then I'll play an engage. Set through all of this, lock me out of my graveyard and then I will still play an engage. Like, yep. It's, it's it's crazy strong. So is he using this uh, preemptively during the standby of Inus' turn by bringing out the Skeleton? It seems to be. Maybe he's just doing it in the main phase. Okay. Uh, so he now uh, like has that link material. Yeah. Because of the way like some cards, sometimes you think like, okay, everything's a quick effect. I might just be able to hold it. But then actually that's not quite the case because if you activate IP, um, it might be the case that you have to... Uh, he might, for example, target the Babel with something. And, I don't know. I mean, there, there can definitely be like irritating situations. I mean, maybe Andreas has the correct one in his mind, but... I feel like sometimes it might end up that you have to chain things in the wrong way. Um, and that might irritate you. Mm. So Andreas has got the choice here as to whether he values the Call by the Grave more than his Babel. I think it's... Uh, by the way, did he... Has he used this just... Like, has he just summoned Prank and attempting to pop a card? Or did he go to the battle phase? Or? No, he's just summoned Pank and targeted Babel. Oh. Okay. I don't know what's prompting uh, link to, link to IP right now. He must have declared an attack with it, right? Um. <laughs> I mean, you can't have declared an attack and then have IP activated. That doesn't make sense. Was, oh yeah, she's main phase only, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sign up mining. Um, he mining pitched mining instead of a. Uh, this Spinny. Do you think there's any? Well, it gives for that? you more resources for this turn in the form of the normal summon Spinny, right? Okay, sure. I d honestly, at this point, like Andreas knows completely what he's facing. He knows the only cards left are the ones that are showing face up mm. for Enos, and I think you know the the engage might deal with these by itself. Just Let by alone, itself, <laughs> uh, having a skeleton to summon Dingirsu on your opponent's turn. Yeah. Um, so he's definitely in a very happy situation. Further, he has um, Long Gear Su. So he's got two negates on his opponent's turn and an engage to follow up. So Long Gear Su can send. I, I feel like it's quite difficult for. Oh, this is a nice. I don't think Long Gear Su is really going to be able to use its effect here, right? If he uh, just kind of sticks to the left side of the field. Well, uh, yeah, but it's any linked monster. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So. Oh, and that DD Crow comes and down the DD Crow, on the which Spinny. Or uh, no, on the on the um, Foxy. Yeah, on the Foxy. Yeah, sure. that's, yeah uh, so Foxy was going to threaten the Babel, but DD Crow said no to that. Babel's still there. All right. Well, I mean, that's like we've seen two games at these decks, kind games. of where they the deck has you, just been like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, and yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's hard. I feel like in a lot of games. You have to have a better hand than your opponent if you're going to win going second, especially unsided. Mm. Um, but now we are sided. We're well, going to have to see some like we unfair see, strategy yeah, being used, cards. like like the like, like the artifacts uh, package that Ines is citing here. That's probably going to be co uh, coming in. Um, so he's a little bit more favored here by going first. Uh, going second, I'm looking at Andreas's list. He's got two copies of Mind Control, so that deals with the roar. Um, there's two copies of Nibiru here. Do you think maybe like evenly could come in, or is that like maybe committing too much to oversiding? Yeah, I, I feel like again. So what we 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 we've said this, and I'll say it again: is you have to view whether you think your deck is bigger than your opponent's deck. 
So do you need to deal with your opponent's monsters, or do you need to deal with what your opponent's going to try and do to stop you from playing the game? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I feel like in the situation of the striker orcus player, you say, I don't. I think my monsters will beat his monsters in a head-on fight. You just need to make sure it's a fair fight, and he doesn't do anything unfair like Abyss Dweller or what would you go for Lancia. in this scenario. So would, you, would you be citing like you know? Trying to like maybe a card like Nibiru, which obviously deals with like more engine, or would you be like uh, yeah, kind of cautious I'm, of like I, back I mean, row? I don't see that much in his side deck actually that deals with Alancia, so maybe he uh, a scythe. Sorry, uh, he, there is no scythe in the deck of um, Gutich. So there's a there's a Lancia, but no scythe. Oh, I swear I thought I saw a Sanctum here. I think I just talked about it. Oh, okay. So I think perhaps Nibiru to try and prevent the Dweller. Yep. And like maybe Nibiru, like uh, Dweller is probably going to be like the most clutch thing he's like wor uh, worried about, right? Yeah, like so that's like that's like the single most like threat that you kind of like have to like build around, like when yeah. you're going second exactly. in the scenario. Exactly. So maybe Nibiru to negate the Dweller, and maybe called by the Grave to negate the Lancia, and any other hand traps might be the line of action for Andreas. Ines is going first here, and he picks up Lancia. I, I see at the front of his hand there. Is that two Lancias? Can't quite make out. Yeah, I'm going to go with two Lancias. Spinny Foxy, I want to say. And I'm start. All right, we're getting these loaded in, in just a moment anyway. We'll I think that's a, quite a happy a hand. Look. Are you happy with that hand? Uh, it's, I mean, you can't really go wrong with Lancia. You've got interruptions. You can't go wrong with Lancia. And Lancia can pass two of your opponent's turns. <laughs> two of your opponent's turns. That's quite good. Yeah. Well, well although, however, Andreas does have the uh, engage, so he's got access to the Striker engine. A look, uh, he can maybe choose to kind of focus down that route. I feel like more with a, something like that, it's like enough to do one turn. Mm. Like maybe you just kind of faff about for one turn, try and stop your opponent from killing you. <laughs> faff about. Like you've still got all of your resources for next turn, and yeah. then if the second Lancia comes down, that could just be devastating. Um, and a, a nice hand. One of the things I found that's difficult when playing Salamangre actually is when you should use Foxy and when you should not. Uh, when you take that gamble of mm -hmm. using Foxy. Um, the and excavate I think effect you're referring to? Yeah, the yeah. excavate as opposed to the discard. Yeah. I think I in mean, this situation it's fairly clear you don't because you've got that very yeah. clear, like, I should make a rank yeah. three. I, I, th I think when you, like, know that you have a play, like, it's, it's not worth it. You know like, you have a like, play. Like, sometimes you are push, uh, pushed into this scenario where it's like, well, I don't have anything here, I just hope I hit Gazelle. Yeah. So. <laughs> but here, like, you know, I mean, in this case, Ooh, the play is going to get... Is that Imperial Order, is it? Yes. Where did that come from? The, his deck. <laughs> did he just... <laughs> He drew it. Off, I did, I, I uh, did, the I did, upstart goal. I didn't. I did. Oh, yeah, that was it. The upstart goal. Okay, that makes sense. Because I didn't see it at the opening hand. I was like, where does Imperial Order come from? So I'm quite surprised. So there's this Diddy Crow in Andreas' hand. So do you think he uses it now? He's holding it. Ah, uh, he's choosing to hold it. Oh, wow, I mean, I suppose because what we can see, the hand of Enos is Lancia, Lancia Order. So if he has any semblance of a play mm -hmm. on his own turn, like any resources left for next turn, this is going to be really bad. So uh, it's it's quite hard to. I mean, he, the impermanence is fair. That kind of shuts down what's going on. Do you think you make a sunlight wolf? I don't know. Um, I think with the imperial order, you kind of like just hope that gets you through. You like stop all your opponent's spells, and then you like have order and lancia, which is in, which is crazy. Yeah. So like, you probably feel like you can like you can you're able to like survive like because your opponent just really can't maybe do much under the Lancia and you just want your Stalio to stick so that when you're following turn you're able to access more of your engine, right? So question here. Andreas says so there's there's the Lancia. Do you chain Gizmic? I think you have to, yeah. yeah. It, you have to just take this risk uh, of possibly <laughs> I was just saying, ah oh, you can't use Gizmic under Lancia. <laughs> He's like, yes I can. <laughs> I am chaining. I can chain it. Uh, and then you're like, ah oh, I'll chain my second Lancia. It's like that does not work. <laughs> Once per turn, right? Or oh no, it's not once per turn. But Gizmo is just a cost. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right, well, um, oh, so here we have because this situation, like, although Enos is successfully going to shut down Andreas from doing basically anything, he has also not got any <laughs> plays himself. Is, I, I just love when you see this like clutch one off being flipped. He's going to be in a tricky situation now. So he's also under crow. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen here, if I'm totally honest. So both of his monsters are going to get cleared. He has to top something good. Because the... the if he top decks Circle, that's going to be quite ironic. Circle would, yeah, Circle would... <laughs> I don't even know, like, outside of Gazelle? Yeah, this uh, Salmon Grey, I feel like, doesn't top deck very well, especially when you're under your own... Uh, you're under your own Imperial, Imperial Order. order. 
There's a Didi Crow. D uh, okay, so what? do you think maybe Draw. you shouldn't have like flipped the order? Perhaps? No, you, I think you have to. Kind of, you kind of have to, right? But like, uh, it's it's uh, so I, it seems like a bit. I guess like in hindsight, maybe he should have linked off the Stalio and the Balings into a wolf, and then you'd have the guy in the graveyard, uh, the Balings in the graveyard to protect you from battle. That well, you way don't have the Lance here anyway, because you played. Oh Lance yeah, because so you, you can't use, use Balings. Oh, I guess this just was it not like it just wasn't a good situation. It was just a lose lose. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, um, it seems like he's going to go for Phoenix oh, here. Yeah. Oh, no, he's going for Mascarena. I thought maybe he did, like, try and out the uh, yeah, Imperial Order, but maybe it's not, like, a pressing matter right now. I think maybe... I like, mean, he's only got the one spell, yeah. so he'd have to discard his DD Crow, which yeah. he's probably quite fond of at this point. And it, realistically, the Imperial Order might be, like, hurting Enos more than any uh, more than yeah, Andreas. he takes 700 a turn. Not literally <laughs> hurting. <laughs> All right, so Ash Blossom was top there. I mean, he's just got <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Oh, do you think he needs to set that? I mean, he knows that. And, I mean, if he doesn't, right, Andreas just summons Gizmek on his own turn. Right. But he's not going to be threatening. Oh, he is actually kind of low 58. 50, Gizmek plus Mascar uh, Mascarina. Well, Gizmek and plus... The king. Uh, and then you link it, and then you just yeah, yeah, another yeah. Gizmek as mm. well. Yeah, he, so he is kind of forced to like set this here. But this is a um, very strange game. I mean, Andres has used no office cards yet. <laughs> it's just he's just playing beat down. He's just Gizmek beat down. Yeah. <laughs> Gizmek plus a single impermanence is it, it, apparently enough to beat an entire Salamangre deck. <laughs> just slightly sad <laughs> for the Salamangre deck. Oh no. So the, the well, he should be at least like survive this turn, right? Maybe. I think so. Yeah. So I think if you're Andreas, you know that that's an Ash. Because any... Um, well, it's, it's a hand trap, right? Because any non-hand trap, you would just... Make a Bailing. Uh, yeah, well, you would just summon, because you have Spinny in the grave. So you would, tr you would try and do mm. something. Right, yeah. But at this point, he has just no cards left. I don't, I don't know how you get out of this situation. You draw Gazelle. You draw Gazelle, and it gets spun by a Link Summon Unicorn, perhaps? Yeah, I don't, so. I don't know what that can be. All right, well, oh, he sends the field spell as well. Interesting. I don't know what's the point of that, but maybe there's a point. <laughs> maybe he was worried the order would turn itself off somehow. Maybe. I mean, the field spell's not All that right, threatening there's a, Oh, another Ash Blossom. Oh, God, that's not going to do anything. Well, it ah. is a fire monster. It is a fire monster. And it's a Salmon Great deck, so this synergy here. There is somehow. synergy, but not enough. <laughs> not enough. All right, there's the shake of the hands. Ines, unfortunately, not able to take... Revenge here, Andreas. Really just showing, again, proving to us why Sky, uh, Sky Striker Orcus doesn't matter what deck you're up against. Because we saw like that slight amount of fragility there when it was a single impermanence, really, that just took out his entire engine. Yep. So, I mean, he had two cards that went into the uh, his sort of little combo, let's say, Balinx plus Stalio. That was shut down by one impermanence. Those monsters were attacked over, and then he had no follow-up. Whereas this is the Orcus, like, I mean, Orcus, they, they don't always have it, but uh, they have the bare minimum. Like, first of all, it's one card that you summon. So if that gets negated by impermanence, you've already lost the one card. And if it's a mathematician, it might get its um, value back if it's destroyed. So, I mean, maybe we're just seeing the slight amount of fragility. I mean, obviously, the Salamangre does have the offer of being able to access Bistuella, but it has that extra fragility of just, you can just get shut down. Yeah. Uh, I feel like with nothing it, left. Yeah, I, I, I think like when you are playing like the weaker deck like that, really he's gonna have to rely on like opening more unfair cards than your opponent in this situation. Like, it's uh, it's just a case of um, the engine just not being quite formidable enough when your opponent is able to crew as much advantage as he did, and uh, you know, the. So I mean, he did have all Sorry. of the unfair cards that he might have needed. Mm -hmm. So. It's it's the engine there that got shut down rather than the uh, the unfair cards themselves. So like two lances went through, Imperial Order resolved. Between those, they negated half of his deck. But we just saw like just a slight amount of fragility being exploited from the Salamangre deck. And I think you could say that's quite a clear um, nod to the to what happened in the Forbidden Limited list because yeah. it's that much harder to shut them down. Like if they draw Gazelle then that's an effect that requires negation in and of itself, and it's like a play by itself, whereas instead you need multiple cards to play, and then you get stopped, and then you've got nothing left. Yep. Couldn't have said it better myself. I'm just really disappointed to see that this is the final Salomon Great deck left in top cut, and it's... Uh, <laughs> it's well, gone. Now it's out, so... Um, Too fair.
hopefully we'll uh, be able to check out the bracket at some point for, an, uh, for, for the following matches and see just exactly what's left around about the halfway point as we approach top eight. But as of right now, uh, Sam and Great is no, no more. Let's take it back to the players here and have an interview with Matt Bell. Thanks, guys, for that. I'm here with the winner, Andreas, from the top 16 match. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great right now. Uh, I'm going to him again. And let's go to the top eight. That one was a little bit messy, 2-1, not quite clean 2-0. Was there anything in that match that stood out to you? Uh, yeah, in game one, he had everything, I guess. And I couldn't do nothing to win this. But uh, I balanced everything in game two, and three his mech was massive. Like, he won me the game, as you see. It's a pretty strong card. You mentioned you played Salaman Great uh, for a bit before. So how well do you know that deck? Uh, I was playing Salaman Great for two events in a row. It didn't go well but I knew how to play the deck very good, I think. Okay, and I guess my last question is, uh, with your current deck, would you make any changes to it now that you've played in a few rounds in the tournament? Uh, no, no. 100% this is the perfect list? Yeah, I, I think it's very good, pretty consistent. Well, you're moving on to the top eight. We'll see you for your profile soon. But for you guys back home, stick around with us. We've got more dueling action coming up as we try and figure out who's going to be our champion of YCS Milan 2019.